is Pastor Lyle and welcome to Daily Renewal. The question for you, do you have peace? That seems to be the question of the age. People are looking through for peace through so many different ways, uh, so many different religions. Um, why is that? It just seems that uh, in our culture, there's so many things that bombard our mind, whether it's uh, family issues or, uh, or work or, or even just the fact that you watch... Uh, you watch news programs on TV because most of the times when we watch that stuff, there's not a lot of good news. Even in your Facebook feed, it just seems like there's a lot of angry people out there. Well, I want to talk a little bit about how to obtain peace. First of all, you have to understand, or we have to understand, that it's God's desire for us to have peace. Uh, Jesus is actually called the Prince of Peace. In Isaiah chapter 26, uh, starting in verse 3, it says, you will keep him in perfect peace. This is uh, talking about God. You, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. So the key to having perfect peace is having uh, is understanding, first of all, it's God's will for, for you to have peace. Number two, he's the one who gives you peace because he is peace. But number three, the, the prerequisite for us is that our minds need to be stayed on Him. Now that's tough because there is an enemy to our mind that tries to get us, uh, and as, as since the beginning of before time, has tried to separate man from God. So let's let's talk a little bit about the temptation um, for us, or, or how that temptation works. In 1 Corinthians 10, Starting in verse th 13, uh, Paul says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God's faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Therefore, my beloved, in verse 14, he says, Flee from idolatry. So there is a connection between temptation and idolatry. Well, we need to know what idolatry is. A simple way to put it, idolatry is, I, an idol is something that you have uh, put in your heart above God. Something that, that you um, treasure in your heart above God. A decision you've made to treasure something above God. And what that thing does is it tempts you to have your focus on that item or that thing or that person or whatever it is uh, over top of God. And God wants to be first place in our life. So the first thing we have to look at is, is there things in our lives that have our heart more than God does? Uh, and that can be as simple as situations that we're worried about. Can we trust that God can deliver us through situations? Um, so the idea of fleeing idolatry is the first step uh, of, of, of dealing with the things that come at us. The second thing we'll see in 2 Corinthians 10, starting in verse 4, it says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And then it says, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Again, as I mentioned, when temptation comes, this is orchestrated in the spiritual realm. The enemy that we have wants to get our focus onto something other than God. And Satan actually did this, attempted this with Jesus uh, in the temptation of the wilderness. And we can find that in uh, a portion of, in Matthew, Matthew 4. Um, let's see how Jesus handled the temptation. Uh, it says, when Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness, 
to be tempted, this is verse 1, to be tempted by the devil, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward, he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you're the Son of God, command that the stones become bread. And Jesus answered and said, It's written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And then the devil took him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you're the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it's written, You shall give his angels charge over you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And again the devil took him up into an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall, not, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. And then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. There's, so the, the principles are the same for us. The temptations we have, they come in the spiritual realm from demonic forces to try to get us separated from the Word of God, from trusting God. And what Jesus did here is he, number one, used the Word of God, but he also spoke to Satan the Word of God. So, when we bring our thoughts into captivity, one of the ways we do that, the key ways is, what does God's Word say that would be contrary to the temptation that's coming? And from there, we speak forth that Word. And there's nothing wrong was say, saying, Satan, the Word of God says this, in Jesus' name I command you to leave. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the Word of God that, it, that is empowering, that, that has the power to cause Satan to flee. So do you trust the Word? And my third point, we find in Psalm 106, starting in verse 6, it says, We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. Uh, we have done wickedly. Our fathers in Egypt did not understand your wonders. They did not remember the multitude of your mercies, but rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. Isn't it amazing how quick they forgot about the goodness of God? Here they are, they're being pursued by Pharaoh. One of the most amazing miracles in the history of man was the parting of the Red Sea. The sea parts, there's walls of water on either side, and they cross through on dry land. And not only was that amazing, but as soon as they got through, Pharaoh brings his chariots in and the water piles up on top of them and kills them all. The people who were uh, pursuing them. You'd think that that would be something that would carry them through, a miracle would carry them through for the rest of their lives. But no, a short time later, when the going got rough, they wanted to head back to Egypt because there was things in Egypt that they enjoyed and yet really they forgot just how much bondage they were in. Isn't it amazing for us? You know, we look at that story and think, how could they do that? Don't we do the same thing from time to time? We forget just how good God has been to us. One of the key things about obtaining peace is always being in remembrance of the goodness of God. Well, I hope you got something out of that today. Um, if you did, I, I'm just asking that you would subscribe to my YouTube channel, that you would make some comments below, interact a little bit. If there's... Uh, some episodes that you'd like to see specific topics, let me know. Uh, also, make sure that you like me on Facebook and Instagram and check me out on Twitter. Thank you very much. Have a great day. God bless you.